I am Cynthia Schiller. Please like and subscribe. We're going to talk about the uh, psychopath, the sociopath, and also the narcissist. Um, so some of us are trying to figure out what exactly go is going on with our partner. Um, are people we're thinking about dating? There's something might seem off about them or if we grew up with certain types of parents we're trying to figure out what what exactly is happening so one of the key differences to the narcissist uh the narcissist um has five out of nine traits i have a video on that we'll talk a little bit about the narcissist at the end because you guys have probably learned some things already but i'll cover that but the sociopath um has a lot of narcissistic traits but on top of it they can be uh pretty violent sometimes and there's some defining characteristics that we're going to go over and uh now in the manuals that they have for mental health clinicians they kind of group sociopath and psychopath together as an antisocial personality so um the, they also group them when they're looking at uh the abnormalities in their brain and um so the things with the sociopath is um they do have this um superficial charm um they're very manipulative uh they they have no regard or ability to recognize the rights of others they're totally dismissive on uh, boundaries and uh instead of um having more self-serving behaviors they're more hostile and dominant so they just see people as a way to benefit from they kind of use them as pawns they'll often uh humiliate to gain control over these people but they uh, a sociopath can still have that grandiose behavior they feel entitled they believe everything should be as they wa want whatever they wish for they feel that they should get and just like the narcissist they also go through the pat pathological lying and so that's why it's kind of hard to tell all these different um mental illnesses because they, they have narcissistic traits um and there's just little differences so just be aware that you know you need a licensed uh clinician to diagnose them but it kind of helps us be aware so we can be more cautious whether we leave or stay should we help somebody if it's like our child um or is it you know to where it's getting too dangerous so like i said they have pathological lying um they almost find it impossible to be truthful and they just get caught up in all these beliefs that they have these um kind of like superpowers to where they can get out of anything they can uh feel that they are even able to pass lie detector tests and they um are so unable to feel guilt um they have this deep-seated rage within them and they'll just uh target people they'll take any opportunities so they'll, they'll overcome people as if they're objects and they just feel that you know whatever they do it's it's justified that they're completely in the right uh and so they just do whatever so their emotions are very shallow but um, they often don't let out any uh, compassion and they often have ulterior motives when they act uh, as if they have these emotions. So sometimes that gets confusing too. You're like, they were really warm or they were really compassionate. Those are just manipulation techniques. Um, that's why it's so hard to understand because you see them uh, portraying themselves one way. And we have, uh, you know, like almost like um, an instinct to believe all people are good. But throughout life, we're starting to see that, you know, that's not always the case. Um, it's a big world out there. So these sociopaths, uh, their emotions are, are false. They are not genuine. And you got to be careful. These people can't be trusted. Um, they do not like to keep or their promises won't be kept. They'll go against anything that they said that they would do or keep secret. And they're also unable to love. And this is a lot of times why we're in these relationships um when um like there's 
certain we have like three needs we need shelter love and food basically with water um it, without love there's that failure to thrive infants can actually die from that and it's damaging to your brain i i did a brain damage video where it shows the damage that is done and be aware that these people are doing damage to you so it's up to you what you do but it is something to be aware of it's toxic it kills your soul uh it takes away so much of your life to where you're you're either ruminating or trying to solve problems or trying to understand sometimes it is healthier to just break free because there is no cure for these mental illnesses and they just the sociopaths they are always needing to live on the edge um so they are risk takers and that that's kind of scary remember they they will do whatever they want to get their needs met they're risk takers and violent they can be promiscuous a lot of times they'll have gambling addictions they have no empathy they don't understand it and they will feel contempt uh a resentment uh with being expected to feel empathy because it's outside their realm so they'll just take advantage of people manipulate them with, without a second thought and that's really hurtful um when you're in a relationship because you want a healthy loving relationship since they're manipulators as well because they do have all those narcissistic tendencies um you can get trauma bonded to them and they are impulsive so uh you know um they lack the concern that they should have for for their partner they don't care about their uh, partner they uh feel entitled there's no personal boundaries that you can set up they'll they'll just do whatever uh, especially you know sometimes it can turn to sexual violence they'll most likely have a history where you know you can you can uh, see if they've been cruel to animals you can see if they don't care if somebody else is being cruel to animals they might even get a kick out of it think it's funny and they're just into blame blaming others um they, they uh, will always find these excuses to put the fault onto somebody else and just as an extension of their lying and conning um sometimes they they uh can get out of uh, persecution for any type of illegal acts so you know sometimes they're out on the street and it, it can be a dangerous world out there and they just know how to play the system sometimes so they feel that they are entitled to basically overtake the world um that that the world is there there's to take from so uh as we continue it's um sometimes uh this is important though uh so there's there's a general belief that the sociopaths um characteristics that describe who they are also describe their behaviors they believe it's environmental it's a product of their environment it's not genetic so our social past made without the genetic component it's based on their upbringing what they went through and uh as this antisocial personality uh, they have like a lack of morals because they don't care about anybody else they feel entitled they don't care about you know legal um boundaries and they just can start disregarding the rights of others early on and unfortunately uh treatment is only considered viable uh for a child with this conduct disorder uh, if there's early intervention and it's got to be maintained for years otherwise it's kind of like set in stone um which is really sad about all of these uh you know because we keep wanting to fix our people and this is something that you know uh is is going to be a daily struggle for them even if they go through counseling they they often uh feel so entitled that they don't 
want to self-reflect that something's wrong with them. They feel entitled to their time, that they would rather do their own thing than commit to uh, seeking help. So there's also the psychopath. And this one, uh, they have no regard for right or wrong. And um, now both of these, uh, psychopath and sociopath, are have those narcissistic traits. And I'll go over those at the end of the video. But these are um, based on internal, intrinsic uh, factors. It's not from the outside. So that's where a difference is. Um, so they'll violate the laws just, you know, without regard. And they have uh, the characteristics of both a sociopath and a narcissist. So beware of these people. And uh, inside their brain, the brain pathology that's been done in many research studies, um, within their amygdala, uh, where fear is processed, that's also where the empathy comes from, and also emotional regulation, um, that area has a smaller volume. So part of their brain is not quite there. So sometimes when we hope to fix them, the part that you need, it's just like, I want my car to run. If, if you don't have an engine, no matter how much you fix it, it it's not going to work. It's not going to run. You can deck it out, you can pimp it out, but if a key portion is not there and that, that key portion in the amygdala for empathy is gone and or extremely you know small and so they uh don't care about authority punishment uh does nothing um to minimize their immoral or violent behavior and that's the thing too like um without getting controversial on the death penalty uh a lot of times, um, these are used as deterrents. My degrees in criminal justice, I taught uh, criminal law at the university level. But um, so these deterrents, trying to get people not to do them, a lot of times they don't work because they don't, they don't care about the punishment. Uh, sometimes it is like spur of the moment where they're so used to uh, instant gratification and, and um, that can be just squashing their emotions uh, or overpowering somebody or taking back control that they don't care. They don't care um, about the legal ramifications. So it is not a very effective uh, deterrent. Um, some people see it might be a justified punishment, but it doesn't really work as a deterrent because all these people, not all, but these people with the mental illnesses don't process, they don't care. And that's how they are in the relationships is they don't care. I mean, think about it. Um, if you cannot even process, like, I'm gonna get the death penalty if I do this, to where they don't care about the death penalty, take it to heart, how much do they really care about you? Or, you know, do they really care about picking up the baby at four o'clock? I mean, if they don't care about the death penalty, are they going to care about responsibilities or that you're busy? Um, that's how uh, self-centered they are. So that's just something to uh, remember. So uh, they have differences in certain areas of their brain. They have fewer connections um, between uh, certain areas in the prefrontal cortex where you know, they, they, they can't even process guilt. So if you're like, you know, that really hurt my feelings and, uh, you know, or you can't do that. This is what's going on with that person now. They're like, okay, like, yeah. All right, well, they'll get over it. They can't process it. Uh, and when they don't feel guilty, when they don't have empathy, they just sh shrug it off. And that's why you start feeling crazy because in the beginning, they're showing you the compassion and then they just shrug it off and you're like, like, I thought you were, uh, you know, a, a good, kind-hearted person, or sometimes you uh, rely on, you know, I thought you were a good religious person. Um, it's all a facade. And they will, um, uh, often the psychopath uh, tends to do more crimes. And uh, there's about 1% of the population is a psychopath. So 
they they vary uh they're not always definitive um but be real cautious too because just like narcissists if you read the different um things throughout the internet um it only matters or it's only diagnosed if you have five out of nine traits it affects your life negatively and a therapist diagnoses you so there's a lot of people out there there's homeless people people without health insurance or people who don't want to spend the money these type of people also don't want to go to counseling so if one percent have been uh diagnosed it's probably higher just like the narcissist you read on the internet it's like five six percent um but it's probably 20 25 percent of people and it just seems to be snowballing out of control because mental illness people are raising children who are causing mental illnesses then those kids have their kids and it's just out of control it's not like um in the beginning there was you know one two three people in the community now it's like overtaking the community and it's pretty scary so um uh another thing too about these they they did a study on 52 of these convicted murderers and um they realized with uh the psychopath is that when they would uh do whatever they would do it's usually for a need um whether it's money uh something to eat a uh, place to stay stay um sometimes it could even be drugs or even sex but it's more just like food drink and just anything that they feel entitled to and they would say what they want uh, a lot of times without emotion um so they're a little bit more flat and um that's when when um when they're describing what they did so talking to these convicted murderers they're like oh well i you know i just needed a burger i was hungry so i killed the person as, as opposed to like you know um using other types of facial it's just a flat like that's what i did like you know i just wanted some money and, and and they don't process it it's like they're not they're not even afraid to 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 say it sometimes they're just like yeah like there's nothing wrong with what i did i was hungry um so they also um are, are recognizable but based on their speech patterns and the intonations uh and the lack of emotion so um so there's they're still trying to do some more research um on the healability of the psychopath um so far they they say there's no cure um i, I mean if you think about it, your your brain is damaged and um it's kind of scary that since it is thought that it's from environmental influences if you have a troubled child early on um there may be some interventions to to help them stay out of committing crimes but there's a lot of recidivism in, in uh in, in criminology because people just go back to who they are you know um they probably committed the first crime because they thought they could get away with it when they were in prison maybe they're thinking that oh i learned all these tips and techniques um so a lot of times it's kind of sad when they go to prison um they're around all these people and and they can scheme and talk things out and figure out a better way to do things um or who to go to for certain drugs and they get messed up because now they're on drugs and and not thinking the right way and they're already not thinking the right way plus we leave them in a bad state where we kind of set them free in a desperation mode um they have a felony on their record uh so they have a lower chance of getting a job also you know where are they going to stay how are they going to get to work uh where are they going to live how much money do they have so oh it, it's it's terrible what we do but um so i wanted to tell you more about uh narcissism so uh if you guys like this so far please feel free to subscribe and we'll talk about the narcissism if you don't know much about that otherwise you can go ahead and watch another video but narcissism that's just a self-love 
and it's not pathological it's caused throughout their growth time it's not uh there's still some di dispute on it but it's not believed to be genetic there may be some genetic traits but it's probably more um b based on their upbringing so it's uh worsens over time sometimes uh sometimes they will become self-aware they might try to keep it in check a little bit but this is one thing that i've been going through is um you know uh you see when they try to be good but it is so intrinsic in everything they say that like they cannot be on guard 24 hours a day they they just can't and they will try at times if they're self-aware if they're not self-aware um they don't want to hear it they don't want to change they'll even resent you even more and so uh narcissists uh love to talk about themselves or have the attention turned on them uh they often are very conscious of what they look like money uh what their talents are they always want to either be the best of the best or the worst of the worst they just got to stand out they have to stand out the prettiest the ugliest uh the best dressed the worst dressed uh, so it's not always about the being the best because if they feel that they can't achieve being the best then they'll do the opposite but they don't want to just be in the middle um so they uh, often um create this false sense or false reality and that's what they're striving for. So when they come to us, that's when uh, they see the possibility because they see who we are, what our possibilities are, what our potential is. And so they wanna latch onto it, but it's so different. Um, you know, it's, it's just like, uh, can they hang with it? You know, like right now, um, could I really hang what, uh, naked and afraid, something like that um, to live that life? like that's so different um you know to where you're out in the jungle you don't have any warmth you don't have any protection from getting bit by bugs um like i thought that'd be cool <laughs> or not really but you know what i mean where um with the narcissist they think that this world that they're striving for um but once they get there they're like this isn't me you know, or, or sometimes going to certain countries, you know, I, I live in America, if I go to Canada, it's pretty much about the same, I can hang with that. Uh, going to different countries, I don't know if I could hang, and it's not about the people, it's about the cultures, like, uh, I could probably go to Australia, um, but certain, uh, you know, third world countries, um, could I live that life? Uh, I, I, you know, uh, even sometimes people with a uh, cross religion, sometimes you guys are good that way uh, and compatible. Other times you're like, this is way different. I thought I could do it. And that can kind of tear apart um, relationships. So the narcissist thinks that they can do it. They can't. Uh, they might try it and then they might not like it. And then like, okay, I like the person, maybe I got to try a little. And, and it's just not them. Um, and, and they just have to, over, over overtake the situation and when they do that um you know i i i do say that it's like an exchange of energy where and, and this is very minimal but even if i say hi usually if you say hi back it's a good balance you know how was your day my day was good uh would you like to go out to dinner no thank you but at least you acknowledge so it keeps going back but with the narcissist they just take and take and take and we're left with nothing over here and they can't see what they're doing and when we tell them what they're doing they get mad because they're like i'm feeling fine and they're feeling fine because they're taking everything um and they do have the inner turmoil but their needs are getting met because they take and they don't want to stop and think what they're doing so this is what's interesting though um is men uh are, are more often narcissistic compared to women uh the men um 50 to 75 percent of the population of these narcissists are um compared to women are often more grandiose um they feel superior 
And it's a little bit different between the men and women. Um, women too, uh, because of the way um, we, our speech patterns were um, uh, able to, you know, use a little crying fits. Uh, we've learned little techniques. Um, part of it, why I think, and it, to me, it makes sense why there's more men who are narcissistic is because it's a frustration. And usually it's changing now, but usually boys are put in their place. Don't cry. Uh, you know, um, to, uh, boys will be boys. Boys will be boys. So they're roughhousing, punching each other, not, not really having boundaries. Um, so it, in a sense, you know, these uh, male children are, are taught not to let their emotions out. So they're building up frustration and we need to be able to express ourselves. That's why you guys are so frustrated. Uh, if you're with a narcissist, you're like, I'm just trying to explain. I just want to make it better. But the boys, some girls, um, but the boys um, are more often told to hold it inside. And you know what that feels like with you? Um, you're like, I, got, I just have to say it, especially as the abuse goes on. In the beginning, um, you kind of deal with it a little bit, but after a while, you're like, this has to stop. This is too much. Um, and that's why a lot of times these relationships can go on for a long time because you, you, you try and try and try. And then, um, you know, there comes a time when you realize, you know, there's no hope. Uh, so uh, narcissists, they just constantly need praise. Um, they, they will play the victim sometimes so you can stroke their ego. And it's really interesting on how they talk. Pay, pay attention. Uh, it's kind of mind-blowing looking back at, at the things that, that you see, uh, which is good that you're learning, though, because you want to avoid anything in the future. But... Um, They'll, they'll often uh, mislead people, take advantage of them. And it's, it's sad that a lot of people are naturally drawn to these people because they're attractive. A lot of times they're charismatic, exciting, and people want to be a part of that. You know, uh, it, it's always fun in the beginning. And the abuse happens more once they get close to you. So you might not notice it at work. You might not notice it at um, your religious gatherings. You might not notice it um, out and about, but once you're around them all the time, they, they just let loose on you. They, they need to let loose on somebody. And that's why they secure us first, because they don't want to lose it. And they know if they treat everybody in the world that way, nobody is going to deal with them. So they need somebody to give them the supply. Like right now, if I, if I just go out, I don't know, for a walk, um, you know, is somebody uh, going to tell me I'm smart? Is somebody going to tell me I'm pretty? Am I going to get whatever I need? The narcissist needs to know that they will have whatever it is they need. Um, so that's why they secure it. Sometimes too, it's just for a house to live um, if they don't want to work because they feel entitled to, you know, why do I have to do that? And so sometimes they're passive aggressive. Uh, they can like, like scowl at you. Uh, they can give you dirty looks to kind of control you. Um, you know, it, it's just a control thing. Uh, they'll often be envious of other people and um, they, they can uh, either cut the people down, um, not let them have uh, the credit, you know, uh, if I don't know, so-and-so was really hard, they're probably like, yeah, they're sleeping with the boss. That's the only reason they got that. So they don't let the person, um, or they don't give credit to the person for, for making their achievements. But if you do that to them, they will go off the hook and they'll, um, love to be the center of attention. Narcissists just, like all the others, they lack that empathy. They got that brain damage. And that's um, shown by MRIs, magnetic resonance uh, imaging. Um, and that's uh, where they reveal the thinner cerebral cortex. And that's compared to a group of normal individuals. 
who have a thicker cerebral cortex. So there's actual differences in the brain and it happens over time. So it's not like they were born that way. Um, there might be some genetic things, but there's, they're, they're, they're not a hundred percent sure on that. Um, there's like thoughts, but, um, you know, it's always good to have like some ambitions in life. So that's good. But the narcissist takes it to a different level. Um, they are obsessed with it. Uh, a lot of times they embellish it because they haven't achieved it. Uh, they just feel superior. And a lot of times too is, uh, you know, they'll pass off work that they should be doing onto somebody uh, in a lower tier um, because they're like, whatever, I'm, I'm the vice president. I don't have to do that. I'll, you know, so they're not pulling their weight, just like they don't pull the weight in the relationships. And the narcissist, uh, is really insecure, which is kind of hard to, to see sometimes because they seem so confident sometimes. But if you, uh, start living with them, you're going to see, uh, the little things, the little triggers that set them off. Um, or, or the way they, the, their facial expressions, uh, sometimes change that, you know, uh, even when they try to hide it, they're, 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 they're going to hurt you just by like looking at you certain ways. And, you know, they'll, they'll often gossip, talk about people, uh, call them liars, uh, you know, um, disloyal and it's, it's, kind of hypocritical because they'll share those same uh characteristics but that's like the projection you know uh it's it's just the insecurities uh they're they're, they're trying to find some safety net and upon first impression you know they seem charming confident but as as we get to know them you know we get to kind of see who they really are or they're, they're not uh, able to prove, you know, they said there was a president of the company, but I see you working at a gas station or you work where, but there's only 20 miles on your car and it's a brand new car or, you know, a uh, car we've had for three months. Like I thought you were working at it. it just, things just don't start to make sense. And that's when it all starts to fall apart because we want answers you know we just want to get to know them sometimes too it's not even like we're mad at them sometimes we are but we just want to clarify or we just want to get to know it or we give them a benefit of the doubt or oh maybe you know they i don't know stop by somebody else's house because so and so wasn't home so it's not like they were lying but you know they'll, they'll often say well you didn't ask and sometimes you know throughout relationships it's you know, do you really need to say it? But if it's kind of like an issue or if it's somebody you might be cheating with, you know, if you go to stop at your sister's and went to your mom's, um, but if they ask you, you know, what did you do today? Nothing. I mean, then you should, it makes sense to talk about it, but they love to hide things and um, they can hold grudges for a long, long time. Narcissists can give you that silent treatment for years sometimes. Um, there was one uh, viewer of mine who had said that, you know, his wife, I believe they were married, the woman, uh, I think it was wife, uh, didn't talk to him for a whole year over him not wanting, uh, him not wanting her to sleep on his side of the bed, but he didn't know it. She didn't tell him. So she's mad at him for a year. I do believe they were married over something they didn't even discuss. You know, she might have said one time, oh, let me sleep there. Uh, or he was like, get to your side of the bed, you silly. And uh, didn't realize, you know, because for years or months or whatever, they were, they kind of developed a pattern. And, you know, um, who knows what the outcome would have been if they discussed it, <laughs> if they would have been stubborn or they would have switched or they didn't even discuss it. And it was a year. So... They, they just hate uh, criticism. They find it intolerable. Uh, they can't handle it. And a lot of them are constantly on the go. Um, that's more your uh, um, grandiose ones are, are more on the go. I've noticed 
from my take uh, is, no, I guess, I don't know. It depends on the person, the ones that I've known, but I do know some where uh, it, it's kind of a mix. And this is, uh, you'll see this too in the research because um, I have one uh, that I know of who kind of flip flops between the two and um, is very vulnerable. Uh, that's usually more uh, through uh, when they drink or use drugs. So there's those kind of factors too that you got to take into it. But um, it it's just comes down to control. You know, the narcissist wants to be the leader. He does not want to follow, does not want to deal with the uh, rules. And, um, you know, sometimes they'll uh, expect you to... Uh, you know, save them time. So they expect you to do all the planning and cleaning. Um, other times too, they, they feel that they need to be in control. They, you know, uh, they can get angry if, if you set things up, if they wanted to, but certain narcissists will get mad if it's the other way around. Some, some will, uh, be persistent. Uh, you know, they'll always like, Hey, look at me. Uh, text a lot, call a lot. Um, and sometimes we'll do that too in reactive abuse. So whoever's starting it uh, is kind of the abuser. So if you think about when you're hitting, uh, or if you get hit, you might hit back, which you shouldn't really resort to physical stuff. But sometimes you kind of need to protect yourself. But once you hit, they're going to come back. And then now it's like a big thing. Um, so they're starting it and sometimes we lash back uh, it's you know uh depends on how dangerous it's starting to get how much is like hurting us and because of that uh trauma bond it's really hard to leave so just be aware of this uh let me know um what kind of videos you guys would like i hope these are helpful for you that's the main thing by learning um you know, it, it can really, really help because uh, it can be so damaging. So big hugs to you guys. One-on-ones are available and I will see you in the next video.